Hi, today we're going to talk about making connections. And this is really the last stage of writing an essay because you want to go back through your body paragraphs and even between your paragraphs to make sure that your ideas are easy to follow for your reader. There are five techniques that we can discuss for building cohesion. Um, however, for the purposes of this class, we're only going to look at these four. All right, so the first one is using guiding language within a paragraph, and it's how you lead your reader from one idea to the next. So as you develop your body paragraph, you're going to look at the kinds of information you need to develop the idea of the paragraph, and you want to make it so that the functions of those ideas are very, very clear to your reader. What are these ideas doing for the overall purpose of the paragraph? and grammar is gonna come into play for this to work. So let's take a look at this example here where I have a couple different moves or areas where I have to um, build cohesion between my ideas. So like every body paragraph, I start off with my what. What is it that I'm going to argue in this body paragraph? And here my focus is gonna show that standardized testing motivates students to work harder. When is signaling to my reader the next step that I need to include, which is my how. How am I going to argue this? And to do that, I'm focusing on the topic sentence of when students face pressure of achieving a certain test score, they are forced to work hard. So this is my how. Then you can see that there's um, an outside source that's included. And then so is showing me that I'm explaining a reason. My next move is however, which explains an opposite point of view. So I'm contrasting a previous idea. Then you, they show that we're going to include another outside source. We're going to explain that outside source. And then we are going to provide an example of that idea, an addition to that idea, with another example, and then my summary statement. So it's very clear to the reader now how the ideas build upon each other, why they're included, and what function they're providing for the central idea of standardized testing motivating students to work harder. So that's guiding language within a paragraph. We also can use guiding language between paragraphs to lead our reader from one paragraph to the next and show the relationship between those ideas. Because you don't want to just jump over, you know, from one idea to the next and not set the reader up for how that's functioning within the entirety of your essay. So at the end of this paragraph, um, I have, again, another grammatical structure to show me but the next idea that's going to come up is going to be in contrast to this paragraph. So we're contrasting ideas. And here you can see that the writer introduces the idea of heroes and conflict at the end of this paragraph. And this then he begins the next topic sentence with um, heroes must often face some opposition which is in relation to this idea of conflict, before leading the reader to the next paragraph's main purpose to show that heroes must be brave. Okay, so the next one is called lexical chains, and this is where you repeat keywords or ideas related to your um, overall goal. And this is really used to emphasize important ideas that your reader should pay attention to, and it shows how your ideas are organized. And it also provides alternative ways to talk about your um, topic. And to make this one a little bit easier for you, it, this is where um, you might want to sit down and brainstorm a list of words that will help you accomplish this. But first, let me show you what this looks like. So in this example, you can see that in red, I have highlighted the words to form a lexical chain of things that are good for studying abroad. 
so that the reader can follow the organize, organization of this idea as it develops. And then in purple, I have this longer lexical chain that refers to the idea of studying abroad. And it draws the reader's attention to my topic throughout the entire paragraph. Okay, so you can see I wrote studying abroad, international students, studied overseas, international experience. All those things show me or are synonyms of the idea of studying abroad. All right, so our next idea is using pronouns. And this is a way to link an idea to a previously mentioned idea. And what this does is that it signals to the reader that there is a connection. The reader will stop, look back to the original noun, and then consider how the ideas are connected. So, for example, in a pronoun reference, we have these ideas of the length of each stage of culture shock may vary from one person to another. They usually occur in the same order, however. So here I have the idea of each stage of culture shock may vary from one person to another. They, which is referring to each stage of culture shock, okay, usually occurs in the same order, however. Remember, however is telling me contrast. So if I were the reader here, when I get to they, I stop look back, see what I'm referring to, and then because I have this signal of contrast, now I can see that, all right, so even though everyone has their own um, length of stages, they're the, in the same order. So now I know the connection between these two ideas. Okay, our next pronoun we're going to talk about is called demonstrative, and these are, <laughs> that was demonstrative, this includes this and that, and these and those. Those are demonstrative pronouns. They refer to an entire passage that has already been discussed in order to connect to a new idea. What that means is, take this example where, you know, we're presenting our idea, we have an outside source, and so here's the idea we develop. The student develops his own approach to the new culture that will help him when he faces a new difficulty. Already discussed, already explained. So when I come to this um, pronoun this, it's referring to the complete idea mentioned beforehand in order to make a connection between the idea that because of this approach to the new culture, it allows him to feel more relaxed and at ease in his day-to-day -day life. So making this cause-effect relationship between the fact that they develop their own approach and that approach is allowing them to feel more relaxed and at ease in his day-to-day -day life. Okay, and the next one we're going to look at is catch-all nouns. And this takes the previous idea of the need of a demonstrative um, pronoun. So this, these, um, that, and those, plus what we call a catch-all noun. And why this is useful is when you want to um, introduce an idea that was previously explained and you want to um, refer back to it in more of a summary fashion. You don't want to specify exactly what those ideas were, but you want to refer back to the idea in a more of a broader um, sense of the word. So what I mean by that is, in this example, my focus is on my purpose for coming to the United States. So why did I come? And I have two ideas. I was interested in volunteering, and I wanted to improve my English skills. I also wanted to learn about the U.S. medical system. These reasons were related to my professional goals rather than furthering my education. So here is my demonstrative, and here is my catch-all noun. All right? 
And what this does is I'm referring back to a previous idea, specifically the reasons. Reasons for what? For coming to the United States. So it's referring back to this idea in general, but it includes interested in volunteering, improving my English skills, and learning about US medical systems. Okay, this is um, signaling to the reader that the ideas have already been described. I can stop, I can look back, and um, list out what those reasons are. But it's more in a summary fashion instead of restating them. And here's a list of those catch-all nouns that you will commonly use in an academic setting. All right, our final technique is called linking old and new information. And this is where the central point of one sentence is built upon by the subsequent I, um, sentences. So you, you have this sort of building block of ideas that are con directly connected to each other. They support each other and they work together to explain the point of your paragraph. So what I mean by that is you take the old information in the first part of the sentence and it's followed by new information in the next part of the sentence and that continues on as you add and add and add. What that looks like is, here's the first part of my sentence where I'm talking about culture shock and reverse culture shock. My old information, there are several stages in common. These shared stages, this is a catch-all that we just talked about before, include a honeymoon stage, a disintegration stage, and an adaptation stage. This is the idea I want to carry over. So I do that by saying during the honeymoon stage. So here I have my guiding language to tell me a period of time. Students feel elated by the freshness of the culture. So I take the idea of feeling elated, bring it to the beginning of my next sentence and say this excitement. Again, this is um, a demonstrative. And then um, I have another idea, returning to their home culture after a long absence. I take that, I put that at the beginning of the next sentence. When students return home, the reaction to the familiar sights of their own culture can surprise them. So you we're kind of putting together a couple of the other techniques we talked about before to achieve this linking of old and new information I'm paraphrasing so that I'm not repeating, you know, exactly the same thing over and over again. And but I'm creating this chain of ideas that build upon each other to help me support and explain the point I'm trying to make. All right, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe below.